Coco Taylor. That was an excerpt from the 1967 live performance of Wang Dang Doodle, featuring Little Walter, Willie Dixon, and none other than Coco Taylor. Coco Taylor was an icon of the blues world. In fact, she held more blues honors than any other artist, man or woman, with a whopping 29 awards. Let's explore what made Coco stand out as one of the most prolific blues artists of the 20th century. Born with the name Cora Walton in 1935, Taylor grew up on a cotton sharecropper's farm near Memphis, Tennessee. The youngest of six children, she was raised by her father following her mother's death in 1939. He would make Everybody in the household work, she told the Chicago Tribune. When we weren't in the fields working, we would cut wood for our cooking stove and we'd pick up our kindling. I didn't get a chance to go to school a lot, she said, so I didn't get a big education or college degree. What I know, I taught myself. This cut is from Let the Juke Joint Jump from the album Force of Nature, recorded in 1993. Weekdays, while they picked and chopped cotton, Taylor and her family would sing their own blues. So what it amounted to, she explained, was we would sing gospel on Sunday and blues on Monday. That's the way I was raised up. When she was 18, Taylor met her soon-to-be husband, Robert Pops Taylor, a trucker who hauled cotton. Sometimes I would go in the truck to make extra money picking cotton, she told the Chicago Tribune. When Pops went to work in the Chicago slaughterhouse, Taylor married him and went along. I figured going to Chicago would be like going to heaven, she recalled. One evening, after Coco had worked for more than a decade, it is said that producer Willie Dixon got word of Taylor's performances and was so enthralled with her singing while attending a live show that he decided then and there to sign her to Chess Records produce her songs, and act as her manager. And it worked. She created her largest hit today, the one heard at the beginning of this video, Wang Dang Doodle. Coco Taylor was propelled into the public eye to the benefit of her record label as well. In fact, Wang Dang Doodle was the last chess record song to crack the R&B top 10. Coco Taylor held her ground against blues giants and her label mates at the time, such as Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, and Chuck Berry. Chess Records closed in 1975. Coco became known as Chicago's Queen of Blues and later just a flat out Queen of the Blues. Taylor continued putting out great music, working with diverse artists, and growing her fan base throughout Chicago and all over the world. Coco's iconic run with Alligator Records produced hit after hit with albums like I Got What It Takes, Force of Nature, and Old School. She stayed with Alligator Records for the rest of her career. This cut is Let the Good Times Roll from The Earthshaker, recorded in 1978. Hey, Tell everybody! in town I got a dollar and a quarter and I'm just ran the cloud record after record entered the public's ears and Taylor's voice proved infectious for both black and white blues listeners of the era she released 15 albums including one live album her last being in 2007 before her passing in 2009 at the age of 80 Coco Taylor's legacy stands as strong as her music. She had what it takes. Her truth. Her blues. Taylor's music was an open door. Although her huge following was sad to see her go, they knew that she had lived a full life and her name in music would live on. Wang Dang Doodle may have been her most popular song, but I will leave you today with a deep cut, Blues Never Die from Taylor's record, I Got What It Takes, from 1975. 